guys, so I thought I'd make a really quick video about how to play chords um, in a jazz song with your left hand. Now, there are essentially only two key ideas I want you guys to take away from this lesson. The first one being, you don't have to play all the notes in the chord. For example, if you have a standard 2-5-1 in the key of C major, so D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7, you don't have to play all of those chords. You can do something like this instead. Right, so I dropped the fifth um, in the D minor 7, dropped the root in the G7, and then dropped the fifth in the C major 7. Now the reason you do that is because Chords can get a bit clunky. If you start playing too many notes, it can start really sort of crowding out the melody and sort of sounding really, really dissonant and sort of gluggy, especially if you're playing it sort of down here in the bass. If you play something like... Like, that sounds pretty terrible. There's just too much going on. It's in too low a register. Um, it's just not really clear what's happening. So if you're playing a chord in a really low register, one that has a lot of notes, um, then you can just drop a few of the notes. So you can just play even that. Like a shell chord. Now, it is generally more important to play um, the third and the seventh because that's really, um, they're the guide tones. If you watched my uh, previous video, um, the guide tones are the notes that really give the chord its qualities or its textures. It defines whether it's a major or a minor chord and whether it's a major or a diminished chord. So you generally don't want to drop them, but of course you can. Um, but you can drop the root or the fifth whenever you like. And that's especially useful if you have a chord that's like ridiculous, like a G13. A G13 looks like this. Now, good luck playing that and improvising with your right hand as well. And really, there's just too much going on there. So instead of playing all of those notes, you can just play a little shell. So, here I'm playing F, G, B, E. So we've got the 7th, the root, the 3rd, and the 13th. And that's what makes it a G major 13 chord. You've got the guide tones and the sort of top extended chord. Similarly, if I'm playing a D minor 7 flat 5, instead of playing those four notes, you could just play these three. So it effectively becomes an F minor chord but in the context of the other chords surrounding it and your sort of the scale you're improvising in, it stays a D uh, minor 7 flat 5 chord. Now, the second key idea I wanted to cover is that you don't want to move around the piano too much when you're playing. So, something like this, you'll notice like a 2-5-1, I'm playing a root position D minor 7, a second inversion G7, to a root position C major 7. So I'm not going playing root position for all of them. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because for whatever reason the, uh, the human ear likes sort of to hear sounds that are close to one another. So you don't want to move around too much if you can avoid it. So the easiest way to get to G7 from this position is just by changing these two notes. These ones stay exactly the same. You're not jumping around the keys, you're not changing octaves. You're literally just changing two notes at a time. And that sounds nice to the ear. In the same way that the cycle of fifths chord progressions that I've been discussing in past videos, you can just do um, sort of inversions of root to second inversion chords, like that. So that's um, something you need to work on. So you're not jumping around, playing the different chords from root position each time, and it sounds like you're doing stuff like that, which is a sort of a slightly different style of music. Um, but stay, staying nice and close with your left hand.
sounds pleasant. Anyway, hope that makes sense. Feel free to leave any questions or comments. See ya!